Las Vegas is the undisputed entertainment capital of the world and plays host to over 40 million visitors each year. You have alcohol, you have people coming in, you get to hang out every night of the week. Best known for its gambling and tourist hotspots, this neon city has now been ranked as one of the best places on the planet for great dining. We are a destination pizzeria. We get everything shipped in from Italy and all over the world. The Miracle Mile Shops in Planet Hollywood offers over 35 different choices for dining and welcomes over 85 thousand tourists every day. However, every restaurant fights tooth and nail to attract and keep these visitors happy and well fed. There's a lot of competition. It is definitely a war every day. The income went down because there was rampant stealing. We show you what goes on inside the ropes at Las Vegas Restaurant Wars. Whatever bros, good luck to you, you lemon. That's why every day's war when you go to Restaurant in Vegas. But I always said to myself when I was 13 years old, if I'm not a millionaire, by the time I'm 35, I'll go make a million dollars. And that's basically where I, I hit when Blondie started. So I started pretty much, you know, finding out how to make money when I was younger, doing little scams and stuff like that. One time we came up with uh, siphoning gas. So I started making all this extra money. This way I didn't have to borrow money from my family, you know? But I would still take the allowance, you know? I didn't need my mom getting stressed out. No, what are you doing? I'm selling gas illegally. I said, let's, you know, go to Vegas. I was good friends with Vaughn. I said, let's go out there and kill it. A little scary coming out to Vegas because we've never really been out here. The only time I've been out to Vegas where we, you know, we come out, we gamble and get destroyed. So I'm like, oh, now we're gonna live out here, plus be hammered, plus work, you know? And so I'm just like, here we go. And we met another guy named Joey, which was our other partner. We all moved out here together. We opened up Blondie's and the first year was a complete disaster. Business was good, but we just could not get along at all. These guys knew nothing about running a restaurant. All they want to do is act red. Hey, we're the owners and puff their chest out and everything, but they weren't in there. They didn't know anything about operations. They didn't know anything about hiring a staff. They didn't know anything about taxes, nothing. Okay, I had to do everything. And then they were saying, oh, one of us got to go. Good luck to you. Now I opened up my pizzeria, actually back in the same mall and we're all battling again. Coming out to Vegas is definitely one of the most risky things that me and Vaughn have ever done. We pay an extreme amount of rent but there's an extreme amount of people. There's also a lot of competition. It's a tourist business that we live and die by. We're constantly fighting the battle to try to get those people in our seats as opposed to going somewhere else. If someone looks at our restaurant and then they go across the street to the other restaurant, why? Jonathan is the big kid on the block. I mean, he's almost the bully. The restaurant wars all started. They were trying to take business from us. We have the biggest restaurant. We have the highest rent. We have the most foot traffic. We're a professional bull rider, licensed bar. So when PBR comes into town, we have five, 6,000 people that show up every single night. If you've ever walked the Las Vegas Strip, you'll see hundreds of people dressed up as characters. From Homer Simpson, Elmo, every single Johnny Depp character ever. Uh, we allowed them to ride the mechanical bull for free. The way we compete is our staff. We have to have great girls. When people come in, you know, they can order chicken wings anywhere. But when they're sitting down with a girl who's pleasant, fun, people are gonna come back and they're gonna tell their friends, oh, what a great place. The problem is they sell pizza, we sell pizza. Our pizza is far superior, and Vaughn just told me he's buying another pizza oven. I said, you know, Vaughn, why do you have to buy another pizza oven? We're up until 6 o'clock in the morning. That's the only thing I do is sell pizza. Their pizza tastes like crap anyway. Sorry. People just go there to drink, look at the girls, and watch TV. We'll do anything. I think that's what separates us from other bars. I used to spend a lot of time down at Blondie's. I'd get out of work at my place and go down and hang out with, with you know, my friends down there. And the other restaurants get off work at two or three o'clock and that's when some, you know, some fun started. I came in before and there's you know, three girls completely naked on the bar doing body shots where I'm just like, whoa. The Hangover movie, 
they based it on him. The first time I saw that movie, I was like, that's nothing. I've been out with Vaughn. You're only gonna get better looking. He started out, he was stealing gas in his neighborhood. I don't park my car on the second level of the parking garage because last time I did that, I, I didn't have any gas in my car, so that may still be going on. If he could be a billionaire and do things right, or a millionaire and scam everybody, he'd pick the second one, okay? He's inspired a lot of you know great programs at, at Blondie's. The free fun shots. Every employee at Blondie's can say, I like these people, I wanna get them a free fun shot. And it inspires more sales and more drinking. People always mistake me and, and him. They'll be like, you know, last time I was here, you know, you had my girlfriend's top off at the bar and I'm like, whoa, 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 that wasn't me. I go, I, I'm usually sitting in the office doing nothing. Yeah, we do a beer pong every Wednesday night. Well, I was playing that night, I was in the finals and uh, pretty drunk and I'm in the bathroom and I'm puking in the toilet. And there's a guy next to me, he's puking in the toilet and I'm like, yo, what's up, man? And he's like, yo, my God, this place is awesome. I'm having the best time ever. He goes, yo, we better, you know, not, you know, not get caught puking in this toilet. We're gonna get kicked out of here. And I'm like, why, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, the owner's gonna kick us out if you get caught puking. And I go, bro, I am the owner. When we return, sparks start to fly, bonds of friendship break down, and trust shatters the window when Las Vegas Restaurant Wars gets ugly. There's a lot of really good people out there that want work. There really is. All right, Angel, so I already made room on the schedule for you. I know you can make the pizza, so, you know, congratulations, you got the job. And then there's a few people I took chances with. As my childhood, I was uh, raised with no father. Uh, I was into uh, drugs, uh, just not really caring, and came in, was hired the next day. Been working there since 2010. Ray, let me talk to you for a second. Yes, buddy. sir. Remember when you came here, I said, I really want you to do a good job for me and watch my back. I want to talk to you about that. Okay. You're doing a great job, brother, and I really appreciate you being I here, appreciate right? You, all right? And like I promised you, hang on here, do a good job, you're going to get a raise. So next paycheck, look for it. All right. All right, brother. Thanks, Thanks a lot. I appreciate well. it. Appreciate it, man. I can't stress how much this restaurant means to my family and everybody that works here. You know I'm from Boston, and I'm a big Boston fan, so tell me if you uh, know who that guy is. Magic? Magic. No, it's not magic. It's Larry Bird, oh. all right? Look at him. Slow, white, tight white shorts, can't run, can't jump, but was one of the best basketball players in the history of the NBA. You know why? He was the first one to practice, the last one to leave, all right? Don't think I'm crazy, just hear me out. He was the best player on the team, but the team saw how hard he worked. If you work that hard for us, this business can go to new heights. So when you take a chance on somebody and it works out and you see they're running on their second raise, you've seen that person grow and blossom and they feel like a part of the team. It's also makes me feel good, it makes them feel good, and it's great for the business. There was a property in the space that PBR is in now. Uh, I was actually uh, working for that company, and then when Jonathan had come in and taken over the space, we had met, and I obviously I was out of a job, and he was looking for someone to help him. My position at PBR is general manager. On a daily basis, I babysit about 192 staff members. When I first started working for the company, I came in and one of the first things I did was go look at the liquor inventory. So I was discussing with Mateo, what idiot ordered all this bullshit? Why is there 60 bottles of vermouth? Why are there 50 bottles of Michael Collins? What is all this crap? The guy who worked here before must have been a complete jerk off. Well, it was Mateo. He did the order. He was very frustrated when he first started working for us. He was. You know, having a rough go about it, trying to learn our ways of doing stuff, and, and decided to send an email to, to me, telling me that he's not my clone, and he's tired about the, listening to the fucking candy canes, because it was a huge thing. We had candy canes that he, he spent like $2,000 on candy canes that we had to try to recoup. He was like the angry elf. When I first got involved with the restaurant, I was basically just hired as a kitchen 
chef. Vegas being Vegas, we basically had to fire almost the whole staff. We had managers that would, you know, take the money and go gambling. We had other managers that would be there in the morning when I showed up to open the restaurant, passed out drunk. A lot of the times, we will fire a girl, you know, because she's too friendly or she's too into the Vegas life of drinking and, and everything else. And then Jonathan ends up hiring them down at PVR. I do own a security company, which is incredible that people are still stealing. We catch about 80 to 90% of it as it happens. I can remember one time we had uh, one of the kitchen managers who'd come in and he'd, he'd, he'd end up drinking. We have him on camera because we have a great camera system. You know, we start seeing our food costs going up and next thing you know, we see him taking steaks out the back door. People that did not purchase the open bar were given open bar all day long. As long as they were tipping their bartenders and servers, they were getting free drinks. I came in and these girls came up to me and they said, oh, Tammy's acting really weird. Uh, we think she's on speed or crack or something. She's been out all night. She came in or whatever. So I walk up to her and I'm talking to her. Is everything okay? She's like, yeah, yeah. She's grinding her lips. You know how they grind her lips, like, you know, doing that whole whatever, like they're all cracked out, you know, like a pitcher on a pitching mound, you know, making some weird faces and stuff. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. She just goes running, taking off out of the bar with all, all our money. I set the water down. I get out. I go running down the hallway, grab her. Find out she has all the money hidden on the inside of her bra. I just reach right in her bra, grab the money. I'm like, thanks, that's mine. I mean, you can go now, okay? Vaughn breaks out the long knives after Jonathan steps over the line of nasty promotions when Las Vegas Restaurant Wars returns. I like to use the analogy when I meet with my managers that in the front plaza of Planet Hollywood, right where our patio is, it's almost like West Side Story. Each promoter comes out and they got knives and they're, and, they're, and they're dancing, ready to go to battle every single day. We have gallery promoters and koi promoters and we have pompous people with flowers and dressed up in all these costumes trying to hand stuff out. I'm a promoter. Uh, there's a lot of comedy clubs out here. I'm just trying to get people to come into our club. We're in Planet Hollywood, second floor. Just out here promoting. Free comedy club, ladies, free to get in. Free comedy club, you guys, tonight. We're constantly swatting people away from our front door there, trying to make sure that, you know, they're not on our territory. You literally have to make yourself stand out from everybody else in order to get that 85,000 people in through your door. And it's never enough. Glenn and I will walk through the mall, we'll see what billboards, there's little stanchions that are up inside the mall, and we'll just see what specials they have, and then we usually try to, you know, counter by saying, okay, they're doing pictures for $19, okay, we'll do pictures for 15 Signage is a problem. Tons of things going on at the mall, you have to be seen. And right now they say you can't put a sign here, you can't put a sign there, where can I put a sign? So like I have to sneak my sign and turn it this way or sneak my sign and turn it that way, you know, and then when some of the people close early, I go like put my sign in front of the sunglass out or something. It's tough. And now other people have been copying off us. You know, we'll do from three to six, 20 bucks, all you can drink, Wells and Draft, and now PBR does it. We'll do beer pong Wednesday and Thursday night. Now PBR does a beer pong tournament once a month, every Tuesday night. We did knock them off. We did copy them. I'm sure they weren't happy about it, but it's what, what works, and not every idea that we have is original. When you're more successful than some of the other places in the mall, you're the bad guy. They literally come after you, and they're rooting for you to, to fail. I'm not really supposed to be even doing this. Here you go, guys. Two for one slices of Demori's right down there. Hey, then, folks. Two for one slices down there at Demori's if you want it. No? Everybody, you want two for one slices down there at the Demori's Pizza? All right, no. He doesn't want it either. My father moved to California in the mid-70s, and he noticed everything was East Coast pizza, New York bagels, Boston this, this coast that, and he couldn't get a good slice of pizza anywhere. So he decides to fly my great-grandmother in from Boston, Mama Nona, and actually six weeks before my great-grandmother died, she gave my father the recipe for her pizza sauce. We actually now ship the water, the flour, and the olive oil from Naples, Italy to make our dough. There's two for one slices down there at the morning. It's healthy pizza. It looks like you work out. No sugar or salt in the pizza sauce. 
Demori's right down there, I'm telling you. Do you know this is the healthiest retail pizza in the country? Not like this place is serving garbage. We don't care about health, do we? Because it's the healthiest retail pizza in the country. We put no sugar or salt in the pizza sauce. We use a low moisture, low cholesterol, low sodium cheese, but it doesn't lose its taste because it's pop provolone, pop mozzarella. So all the other chain or franchise pizzas use condensed lard and animal fat to make their dough and their crust. And it's disgusting and it's clogging arteries across the country. If you want to come into Demori's Pizza, you get a quality slice that tastes fantastic and it's on the healthier side. Don't I look healthy for having pizza every day my whole life? I'm not really concerned about health. And you know? I actually really enjoy pizza. You do? Well, I have Demori's Pizza right down there. It's I'm two for one slice. Yet, what about, to, we're open until 3 a.m. just in case you get uh, all wasted and you can come, come in for a slice. As a kid, I collected baseball cards and uh, thought it was a neat little hobby. And from there, we kind of watched things progress from baseball card to sports memorabilia. We do a lot of cross-promotion with the memorabilia place across the hall. TriStar, being a sports memorabilia business that brings in athletes, it works out real well with their sports bar. We enjoy the fact that our athletes like their food, and they come over here and they'll see the athletes and they get to meet each other. So it works out real well for us. They get in the biggest legends, Mike Tyson, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana. The women just really love this guy. He's just a great guy. They get excited. They get to see Joe Montana. He's one of the guys that everybody goes crazy for. We actually give flyers to them and they put them in the checks and they put them on their tables. And then what we do is we have one of their gals stand out front and they will hand out buy one get one free drinks, cards for each client that comes in. They always want a drink or they want to, you know, get something to eat. So they'll, they'll come over to Blondie's and, and we've become friends with Joe Montana. I mean, it's the best. <laughs> He'll break down plays in front of you and say, yeah, look at this quarterback. See, he should have never passed that. It's unbelievable. As the Vegas nightlife changes, the gloves come off, the hookers come out, and somebody's gonna get bitch slapped. This is not for beginners when Las Vegas Restaurant Wars continues. Next thing I know, he stands up and he's all bartender, where's the bathroom? And I go, it's all over there. The guy's got his pants down, falls off the chair and starts urinating all over himself. Everybody, I'm sure, got all kinds of crazy stories. Kid comes in and he's, he basically passes out. We can't wake him up, can't wake him up, can't wake him up. Security comes and they find a bag full of drugs. He's got a whole load of pills and dope and everything else in the bag and he's passed out with the stuff on the, in the bar. We have 105 televisions in the place. So there's always one or two people that are expecting to see their game, hear their game on a certain TV. I go in, I'm managing the TVs and I have people running up to me telling me they're gonna kick my fucking ass, excuse my language, if I don't change the channel. So I'm screaming back, make you move, and we're having arguments there and my employees are watching me and it's very embarrassing now that I think back at it, but you know, you gotta kind of defend the, the home court, if you will. The bachelorette was a little drunk. She ended up in the women's bathroom stall with it locked, her purse emptied, butt naked, in her own vomit. It gets crazy. At our back bar at Blondie's stuff happens. I mean, I caught a guy with one arm reaching over trying to steal a bottle of liquor. And he's like, I never did it, I never did it. We played him back the video, he's like, oh yeah, you called me, I'm sorry. We've had to call security numerous times on, on, the, on the, the homeless guys just walking down the mall and grabbing food off people's table. So his friend lights a match, he holds the shot up to his lips, drinks the shot, and he's about to blow fire, but what happens is he gets too close to the match and his lips catch on fire. And so what's the first reaction? He screams. And then what happens after that? More fire. His mouth opens up, the Sambuca pours all over him, and the guy ignites on fire. I was drinking the night before with these girls, and uh, I got them all hammered. And uh, I just left them, and I went home or whatever, and I got a text uh, around uh, like 6 or 7 in the morning saying, hey, we can't get out of Blondie's. They were in the bathroom and they were, they were so drunk, they saw the gates up and they didn't realize they could just walk to the front door and turn the lock and walk out the door. They stood and they stayed in there all night, these two girls, 
And I'm like, yeah, I'll be there around 10 o'clock, whatever. I walk in and there's these girls. They, you know, they come out, they're like, hey, we were in here all night. We, you know, my, we were drinking, hanging out. I'm like, who else was with you? And they're like, nobody else. We just didn't know how to get out of here. And I walked over, I'm like, you could just walk out the door. That's Vegas, though. That's kind of what you sign up for. <laughs> Anything else besides the big ZD? One slice of pepperoni. Joey does the pizza. He, he caters to the hookers late night, Demore's Pizza. He does that. So what's going on tonight? What do you need? Some water. Well, I got one right here for you. Normally it's three dollars, but with the employee discount, two bucks. No, mm, how about free or I just pay full price? Why do you want to pay full price and give me two for two dollars? It's supposed to be three. What's the matter with you? Nothing. It's always said, something with you. Either I pay full price or it's free. It's really not that. All right, hard then to give me three bucks then. Either full price or free. All right, Which full one? price, three dollars. No. Why don't you get out of here? You always give me a hard time every time you come in here. Whatever, whatever, bros. Oh yeah. Stay back there. Okay. Lucky you you back have there. a good night tonight. Kick your You'll ass, be lucky bro. if you make two hundred bucks for the rest of the week. Good luck to you, you lemon. Good luck. I'm gonna enjoy this water. Bye. Bye. I love you too. So later that night, I decided to go to Blondie's to have a drink, and who is sitting there at a table with two of her friends? That same girl. Hello, ladies. How are we doing tonight? Oh, cool. Listen, listen, hey, listen. Listen, yeah. listen. Didn't listen, I tell let me, you listen, let me apologize. I'm sorry. Let's, I don't know if you told your friends everything. Let's just forget it ever happened. Let me guy, buy you guys around a shot. How about that? All right. All right. Is that, we'll, start, we'll start there, okay? Okay. So a few minutes after the drinks comes, she turns around, looks at me, and says, 500 bucks, we'll go to your room. And I'm like, I live here. I don't have a room, remember? What are you talking about? I'm not paying for you. I don't get hookers. <laughs> get off! Get off! Get, get, off, get, off, me. get off me! Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! Out. These girls are deadly, bro. These girls are deadly. On the next episode of Las Vegas Restaurant Wars, all hell breaks loose when disparage meets reality as revenge gets served up cold. Next time on Las Vegas Restaurant Wars.